All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is going to be the final part to our Build a Rock tutorial. Uh, we were going to move on to Substance Painter and Marmoset, uh, but we did forget one thing, or I forgot one thing, over in uh, ZBrush. So that's why I have ZBrush pulled up now. I forgot to make a decimated version of our rock. So we just need to do that real quick so we could do the the normal and ambient occlusion, curvature bacon inside Substance Painter. So open up your Decimation Master real quick and we're going to go ahead and pre-process current. You don't need to click on any of these up here. We're fine without it. We just need a high-res model. Pre-process. Give that a minute to percolate. Alrighty, it's all done pre-processing for us. And I'm just going to take it down to a million polygons. So it'd be a thousand K polys and then decimate current. We'll check out the results. No loss of detail. It's going to be perfect. So go ahead and export him out. And let's see, go put it in our texture file here because that's where our, all our objects are and rename him to rock high for high polygon. You can name it whatever you want, just so you know what you're going after inside other programs. So I did mention prior on fixing some of the textures inside the crevices there to kind of get rid of some of the shadow information. Uh, so uh, today I decided, well, we'll do a quick step inside Photoshop just to show you that process on how to clean up the texture a little bit more. So give me a second and we'll jump over into Photoshop. All right, we are inside Photoshop now and we're just going to do a quick, whoops, what are you doing? My program is trying to do something that I told it not to. Stop. Oh, give me a sec. To... Okay, I'm back. I know what happened. Uh, my hotkey for pausing video and is the same as one of my actions inside Photoshop. Okay, that's fixed there. And all I did was open up our exported uh, texture map out, out of ZBrush and I brought them into here. And all we want to do is like maybe fix the crevices and get rid of some of the shadow information so it's a little more true of a diffuse texture. So all you got to do is go up to Filter and open up Camera Raw Filter. There we go. And we're going to bump up the shadows. That's going to erase a lot of that information there. We can even bring up some of the blacks. Kind of flattens it out though. So you may want to increase the clarity. We'll bring back the blacks. Maybe bring back some of the shadows there. Hmm. Let's see here. Dial down the clarity. We don't need clarity. It's not doing us any good. May bring up the saturation just a little bit. Make some of those colors pop a little bit more. But we have basically gotten rid of some of the shadow detail. Let me uh, zoom in here. We can take a look here. If you hit P, it'll go back to the original and there. Not too bad. Not too bad. We can we can bake some of the information back in in the other program, but it gives you the option. And click OK. And we're going to do just a slight cleanup on some of the texture. Because if you look like right here, some of the scan data just didn't quite come through as good as it should have. So we're going to give that a new texture right there. So we're going to do the patch tool. Just kind of circle the area we want to fix. And then you can just drag and drop it to an area that looks good. So we may just do that. And it'll blend the colors back in nice and neat. Let's go around take a look. There's another kind of blurred out area here. So we'll fix that. Just find a textured area that looks good to you. 
That might blend in a little better. That's not too bad. Just continue looking around here. I think there are some spots here. Yeah, right here. And we'll just fix him up. And another little spot. I'd like to say I had another spot somewhere. Maybe get this little blend here. Get a little bit better. See, see if we could do this. It's not bad. Just get rid of some of those harsh lines. And obviously this will be a little different because your process would be a little different than mine. Your results. So, just personal preference. And we're just going in and just fine tuning the texture is all we're doing. We're still going to do more inside Substance Painter, but we're helping Substance Painter out. We don't have to mess with so much in there. And let me get rid of this. There we go. There we go. It's not too bad. We'll do this one and then we'll call it done. There we go. All right, not bad. So let's go ahead and save him out. We'll just do a save as and rock, clean, whatever you want to call it. Save him and then we are going to jump inside Substance Painter. Hold on just a sec. All right, here we are in Substance Painter uh, 2.5.3. And we're going to do new. We're going to select our mesh file here. Let's see if I can find it. And let me just go. Let's open up that uh, FBX file. We're going to keep document resolution at 4096. We're going to add. We're going to add our, this is our displacement map. And then our rock clean open. And click OK. All right, now everything's loaded up in there. Now what we want to do is bake our high poly to our low poly here. So go under your texture set settings. We're going to do bake textures. We're going to make them a 4K. We're going to turn off ID and thickness. We don't need either of them. Load up our high, rock high. And we should be able to just stay with all the other setups there. I think we'll be okay. And go ahead and bake. I'm going to go ahead and pause this, and I'll be right back. All right. Everything has baked all nice and neat. Uh, it only took about a minute to bake it. And if you hold down Alt and click on the canvas there, you can go around the model and check it out. Looks like it did a real good job. No issues anywhere. I don't see any uh, normal artifacts or anything, which is always a good deal. Looks like it did a real good job. Looks like we're looking at a high-res model, but it's only about 5,100 polygons, which is great. If you do Shift and right-click, you can move the environment around so you can get a better light-in perspective see all those little fine details in there it looks great all right so let's start building up our layers over here click on your uh, project here to load up all your assets and for the first layer here I'm gonna go ahead and add a fill and we are gonna just mess with color and roughness I'm gonna set the roughness all the way to 1.0 and that basically makes it flat so not really real shiny or anything at all so and now for the color I want to take our rock clean and I'm gonna drag and drop him right on the base color and you'll see a little hiccup here in a second okay whenever you do uh, 
a fill layer, it, for some reason, it always puts the UV scale at 3. really wish they would fix that and just put it at 1. And there we go. We got our nice clean texture that we put together between Photoscan, ZBrush, and Photoshop. Now we got our perfectly clean diffuse layer there. So what I want to do is maybe bake in some of the ambient occlusion and some of the curvature. I gotta go extreme. So we want to go ahead, I'm gonna do another fill layer. I'm gonna call this one base. It's always a good thing to kinda get a name and convention going there. We're gonna go ahead and add another fill. I'm gonna set him back to one. And color is the only thing I need. We are going to change the uniform color. I may bring it down to just maybe off black. You know, a little bit of a gray maybe. Yeah, about 90% gray. And I want to create... Actually, I don't want that. I actually want to take my ambient occlusion and drop him in there. That's easier. And actually change him to multiply. There we go. Now we've baked in our AO. Nice and clean. And if you wanted, instead of uh, just taking the straight AO, you can actually, if we build, uh, add a filter. And change the filter to blur. We could blur that AO just a little bit. If you turn it on and off, see now it's not a real solid, you know, it's not super dark in those things there. You can actually lower the opacity just a little bit if you wanted. All right, let's see, can I change the color up a bit, little bit? Let me try this. Add filter, and I want to do HSL perspective. I want to do regular. Let me see if I could change the hue. I don't think I, well, maybe I can. Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, that's not doing me any good. So I was thinking I can actually add a, a shade, a particular shade to that color, but that's all right. You could probably actually use that AO as a mask instead and then get a specific color to use. But that's all right. We'll go with this for now. I think it turned out really well there. Like I said, we're not going to do anything really fancy here. So I'm going to change that to AO. And I want to going to add another fill layer. This one is going to be height information. We're going to intensify that that normal a little bit by putting our displacement map in there. So you just plug that in. Okay, so way out of control. So we're going to go ahead and change our uh, tab here to height. And we're going to just lower that down. I mean, we just want it really subtle but that'll add a lot more to our normal map. You can just turn it on and off. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to add a little variable in the roughness, maybe try to get like the upper surfaces be a little shinier than the lower concave so let's go ahead and let me change this to height change it back to base color there and let's do another fill and this one we're just going to manipulate roughness so keep that right there you can see it's pretty shiny there but now we're going to add black mask and then under the mask, we're going to add a generator. And mask builder is what I am looking for. 
Okay, a little hard to see what we're doing there. You can see some of the shiny areas there. You can move the light around a little bit. But if you want to see what the mask is doing, do a Alt and click on your mask. And there you can see just your mask. And then we we'll click on the mask builder. And what I want to do is maybe take out the AO. Curvature is way too high. Need to see. Right, let's see, convex. I mean, we're just going to give very subtle variations here. So if you just click right back onto your uh, picture there, you can see everything. So we'll just turn it off and on. Very subtle. Super subtle. Let's see. What I may do is increase the roughness or decrease it. So yeah, you can see some uh, shininess here on the edges there. But we just want just a subtle variation here and there. Let's go back. Let's see. See what we could do here. See what happens when I do add the grunge in there. It's not too bad. What we may do is add a filter and just blur it just a little bit. Okay, click back on there. It'll be real subtle. You can always manipulate that a lot more. All right, so go back down to the base real quick. I'm gonna add a filter on here and I just want it to manipulate the color and do HSL perspective, but actually change it to regular. Let me show you what happens when you do perspective. I'm going to change like the hue. Let me see. See if I can get this to work. Get this little error to work here. There it is. See, whenever you have it on perspective, it, you can see the UV seam. But if you change it to regular, it gets rid of the UV seam but it does weirder things everywhere else so you want to be very subtle with the saturation there so you can manipulate this to make it whatever kind of you can do like a little alien rock you can do a lot of different little things here glacial type rock or ice really but we're gonna reset him to 0.5 because I want the original color there I just wanted to increase the saturation just a little bit to make things pop. And then once we get this in Marmoset uh, with some of its uh, some of its ambient occlusion as well as uh, a couple other tricks in there, uh, this rock is going to look pretty awesome. So we can do real quick we could take a quick look under eye ray so you can see what that looks like in a ray tracer not too bad let me turn him around where he looks a little cooler he's got a little more pockets And you can always do, you can always activate, you know, if you want to do a quick uh, test of how he's going to look, you can always render him out in here. I always like to change the field of view or the aperture here and raise it up a little more until it clicks in.
There it is. All right. And if you do control and click, There we go. Then you can make a nice little quick presentation of your model. You can always control click again. I know this is probably a little extreme here. <laughs> Point zero zero one. I always like playing with depth of field, but that's fine. We're not in here for that one. So go back to painting. Let me swing my light around here. I may uh, affect that blur a little bit more, or the AO. Let me raise it up. There we go. Get a little more contrast in the in there. All right, so we've got our texture basically all set up here. Like I said, we weren't going to do anything extremely fancy in here. You can certainly take it a lot further and add some more grime on there bunch of different things add a few more materials to it it's entirely up to you what you want to do so I'm gonna go ahead and save this bad boy texture and this one's gonna be called rock rock give that a second to save so we can always come back later all right let's go ahead and export our textures out and let's see let me go got my folder selected in the same folder we've been working with here uh, I'm just going to change it to a JPEG and the configurations just fine document channels normal AO no alpha we haven't made any sort of opacity or anything like that so go ahead and click export okay and we're going to export another set of textures export textures open up configuration additional maps you can actually open that up and see what we're gonna send out there it basically sends out everything down here for the most part but it sends out like curvature which I need and even the base normal base if I wanted really a lot of these I don't need I just need that curvature is really what I needed so we're gonna go ahead export only takes a few seconds or so and we can open up folder and you can see everything it uh, sent out there so we've got our new base color and here's our curvature yep here's the height but we're still gonna hold on all right metallic because there's no metallic in there there's our AO and normal the base normal uh, the OpenGL, which combines that height information we used, and position, roughness, world space, and there's our original one there. All right, so we are done inside Substance Painter for the time being. So we're going to switch over to Marmoset, and we'll continue on there. All right, got Marmoset opened up, and I also got our textures opened up over here, and all our uh, object files. We can just drop in our FBX in there. It's nice and smooth. That's why we created FBX instead. I'm just going to drag and drop a rock low, uh, just a default texture on there. And start plugging in everything over here. We're going to get our base color. That'll go under albedo. We need to change uh, reflectivity to metalness. You can drag, drag that black metallic map in there. That cancels out any metallic. Uh, let's drop our OpenGL normal into surface. There we go. And microsurface is going to be our roughness. Drop him in there. And it's always super shiny. You got to dial it back. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead and drop in a displacement height. Let's take our original displacement map that we generated in ZBrush and drop him into there. It's going to be a little out of control there, so we're going to dial him back. We just need it to be real subtle. We can add some subdivisions to it. That'll help it out. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. But yeah, just real subtle on the, on the displacement map, just to add a little extra to the silhouette. And let's go down to our occlusion. Open him up. We need our AO, the mixed AO. Drop him here. And then cavity, grab your curvature, and then we'll have to just adjust some settings. All right, we got everything we need. We can uh, maximize that. So let's go ahead and mess with our uh, am ambient occlusion because it kind of makes it look horrible at the moment. You can lighten up on the diffusion and then the specular. Now we'll leave it. All right, that helps us out. Let's see. Let's dial back our displacement map just a little. There we go. Silhouette's getting a little out of control there. Looking pretty good. Not bad from our original photos that we uh, did in PhotoScan. Now we got it all the way into here. Nice low res model inside Marmoset. So let's uh, work on a few more options here. Let's uh, maybe get a few more lights. So open up your sky. And we, we can just click on the picture here to see where it's going to place it. And we can actually click on it and change its options to, instead of directional, we'll do spot. And then we just got to raise him up. Have to zoom out a bit for this guy. I may actually move him off to the side. Have him come back. Rotate. There we go. So now let's, uh, we can just duplicate him. Do a control D. And we can slide. Oop. Uh, I'm trying to slide. There we go. Grab the right one there. There we go. And uh, make it even a little more interesting there. Give it a little more depth. We're going to add, uh, if you click on Rock Low, and then cl uh, click on this guy up here, uh, Shadow Catcher. It'll drop that Shadow Catcher down there. Sometimes you will have to change the scale. So we're going to change that to 10, 10. And Z scale we may go up to twenty. There we go. Now we got a. Now we got the whole shadow in there now. Whoop 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 whoop. Where are you going? Whoa. Going a little wild on me here. Is it doing that? Sorry, it's going going crazy. Little mouse movements are dragging it all the way across the screen. Let me see what happens when I throw a turntable on this and see if we're even centered correctly. Yeah, we're centered. Ooh. Keeps on clipping on me though. Let me the shadow catcher. Put him back to 15. Okay. Well, that is odd. Why is it clipping?
never fails something wacky happens whenever I do a tutorial any other time it works just fine let me delete the shadow catcher and see now it works just fine just the shadow catcher is just throwing things off so we'll just keep him out of the equation for now I just wanted to throw a nice little shadow on the floor for you but that didn't happen but alright so continuing on sometimes that shadow catcher works most of the time it does for me well, let's see see what happens if I put them in now Let's see. You're going to behave now? Let's see. Maybe. Alright, for the time being, he is behaving. Okay. So let's set up our uh, render. Actually, yeah, our render. We want to do local reflections, high res shadows, ambient occlusion. And we crank up the occlusion strength, size. Don't get too low, the shadow catcher kind of goes a little crazy. And enable global illumination. Let me show voxels. We need to fit the scene. There we go. Brightness. There we go. Let me adjust that cavity map there. Okay, it's the specular. No? Oh, that is weird. Maybe it is the gloss. Let's do it. I'm trying to figure out why. Well, that's not causing it. Is it the displacement? No, displacement really isn't causing it. Trying to get rid of some of that kind of cellular uh, stuff going on over there. Hmm. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right, so that was the diffusion causing that. Bring him up just a little bit. Uh, the sky is probably just a little too bright now. Now that we got the lights going on in there, you can change the brightness. You can lower it down just a little. You can even lower the backdrop color or the brightness of the background. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we'll keep that on. Let us see what else we can do here. Let's just do a quick test render. Oh, it's clipping again. Dang damn it. It's that stupid shadow catcher. Alright, shouldn't clip anymore. If you hit spacebar, you can see the whole scene. Not looking too bad there. Add a few more uh, effects in here. Turn that animation off for a second. Go to main camera, and now we can start doing our uh, post-processing effects. You can adjust the contrast. Don't get too crazy with it, because it doesn't take much. You can do a little more saturation if you want. You can lower the exposure or raise it up. You can do a little bit of sharpening. Obviously you don't want to get too crazy because it does just about everything in there. You can change the limit on it. We can do a little bit of bloom. 
just needs to be super subtle. And we can also add, oh, let's see here, kind of keep the grain a little low there. We can add uh, a vignette to the scene. We increase the softness there. Zoom out, take a look. And finally, we could do a depth of field. If you do that control click again, that'll center that uh, focal point right there where we want it. Uh, near blur, we can take him all the way off. Far blur, we could push it back to just the back edge of the model. And if you do a quick turntable there, you can see how some of it's out of focus until it gets turned around. Not bad for a quick little real-time view there. Let's see if I can zoom him in just a hair more. And then center him up. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Oh, don't clip. Okay, it didn't clip on me this time. Good. Not too bad. All right, cool. All right, so we are just about there, I think. Let's see, go back up to sky, and I may change the brightness down just, just a little bit. Right. All right, I think we're golden. Let's go ahead and just save the scene real quick. Rock. All right, good to go. And I think we could probably go ahead and just do a capture. Actually, I'll probably change it to 600 frames. All right, so now we'll get two loops of him going around for 20 seconds, which is about what I'd like to do just for quick turntables. All right, cool. So center him back up, go to capture, changed video and I'm gonna change him up to about uh, I'm gonna do about 90 percent you can do auto open export we'll just keep it in that texture panel there all right it's gonna start recording it out for us and I will be back when it's done recording and there you go guys your finished rock turntable. Nice pretty little rock that you can put into any of your scenes. Not too bad for just a handful of images run through a couple different programs and you came up with a 3D, cool 3D, natural 3D model. So thanks guys for joining me and we will see you in the next video. You guys have a great day.